saint and the sinner your friend. Now reconciled in this banquet divine, the promise of life without end. The promise of life without end. Here in your presence, the greatest are least. The burden find rest and the hungry can feast. By love we're invited, here mercy prevails. God, in your goodness we share a place at your table. A place at your table. From this communion in one heart and mind. Welcome to St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church in Gladstone, Missouri for our celebration of the Eucharist on this 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you to download our worship aid for participating in the songs, readings, and prayers. Let us now lift our voices in praise to God, singing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us prepare ourselves to enter more worthily into these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for his pardon. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers pry the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, I don't need to write to you about the time or date when all this will happen. You surely know that the Lord's return will be as a thief coming at the night. People will think they are safe and secure, but destruction will suddenly strike them, like the plains, pains of a woman about to give birth, and they won't escape. My dear friends, you don't live in darkness, and so that day won't surprise you like a thief. All of you belong to the light and live in the day. You won't live in the night or belong to the dark. Others may sleep, 
but you should stay awake and be alert. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. And he said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back, his master said to him in reply. You wicked and lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, Take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Be forgiven. There's a story of a contract manager for a company who has been entrusted with a major project proposal in which the boss will commit $10 million uh, for the project proposal. And if successful, the proposal has the potential of becoming a contract that would yield $50 million. But there is no guarantee of success, as the outcome of the efforts may even result in even the loss of the original investment. Well, after a long year of diligent effort and attention to detail, this good and faithful servant succeeds, and in the end, by landing the contract, receives congratulations by, from the co-workers. 
So then the boss who had invested heavily in the manager came over and said, well done, well done indeed. Then after a pause, the boss says, so tell me, what have you done for me today? The parable of the talents is not about economic prosperity, obviously. Instead, our Lord challenges the disciples to emulate their master by using all the gifts that God has given them for the sake of growing the kingdom. Perhaps another example might be that of St. Lawrence, who was the youngest of seven deacons who served the Church of Rome under Pope St. Sixtus II in the third century. Now, Pope Sixtus realized that the, the great talents that uh, Lawrence possessed and so made him his archdeacon and put him in charge of the treasury of the church. At that time in the third century, persecution of the Christians in the young church was still going on. And the new Roman prefect, Valerian, ordered that all the leaders of the church be put to death. And it wasn't long before the Roman guards came for Pope Sixtus, and they also took six of the deacons, who were then executed just three days later. Lawrence was spared for a while when Valerian learned that he was in charge of the treasury of the church. Now, Lawrence had pleaded with his pope to take him with him, but the pope told Lawrence, see to the poor. So Valerian told Lawrence that his master, meaning Jesus, led with words, not money, So the money meant nothing to the church. In that case, he is to turn over all the possessions of the church to the Roman throne. Lawrence starting to think, with the talents that he had been bestowed on him, he said, I need to buy time. So he told Valerian, well, the riches, the treasury, the talents are so great that it's going to take me a while to gather them together. So Valerian agreed and gave him three days' time. Witness accounts at that time said that the archdeacon masterfully negotiated and traded the precious metal vessels and all else that had monetary value into a greater treasure than these items were even believed to be worth. Lawrence then proceeded to distribute the wealth among the 1,500 of the poor and afflicted that the Church of Rome served. And because the bounty that he had raised was so great, he was also able to dispatch uh, riches to several other churches and other countries. Well, the day came, and when Lawrence stood before the court of Valerian, he was commanded to bring the treasure before the prefect. Lawrence said that the treasure was too great to bring into the court. So Valerian ordered that the doors of the court be opened so he could view the riches. But when they opened the large doors, Lawrence proclaimed, Behold, the treasure of the church. And there before Valerian stood the 1,500 poor and afflicted. Valerian now didn't have much of a sense of humor. He was furious and ordered that Lawrence be executed, which he was the next day. In today's gospel, the master prepares for a journey and entrusts a significant amount of treasure to his servants. And like the two previous parables uh, before this one, The return of the master was certain, but the date was unknown. The master, in the meantime, expected the servants to continue the business of his mission, to multiply the treasure by their determination and dedication. The first two servants did just that, but the third servant was chastised and thrown out. Now, that wasn't because he had failed. It was because he didn't even try. It would have been better for him had he tried and failed than to have done nothing at all. Jesus was teaching the disciples that to believe in him in their minds and in their hearts and in their souls is good and needed for the sake of their salvation. But their actions are even more important. Jesus spoke and talked, uh, taught the people, but it was his good deeds for the poor and afflicted that brought more to the faith. Jesus tells this story to the, uh, of the talents to his disciples in order to prepare them for the days ahead when Jesus will leave them and how they are to demonstrate their faithfulness by imitating his actions 
for what he is calling on them to do, to work in the light of care and compassion for the sick and the imprisoned, welcoming the non-believers, feeding and clothing the poor. For those who are found faithful may hear their master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. His parable wasn't limited to the disciples, but for us as well. The strength of our relationship with God is determined by exercising the talents bestowed on us in the service of the kingdom by word, but mostly by example and action. Let us profess the faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Heavenly Father's never-failing love for us, we humbly approach Him with these petitions. For the ministers of the Church who serve selflessly and faithfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For world leaders who are reluctant to take the first steps that can lead to lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people who generously share their gifts of time, talent, and treasure. To build the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound of our faith community who experience loneliness and despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially James Tierney, Dorothy Scheidt, Father Evan Harkins, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please receive these petitions and grant them if they be in accordance with your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Fed and 
daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Thank you, Lord, oh thank you for all your love. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive and it shall be given to you, says the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So a special hello from me to you, to everyone who's watching from home. I'm Father Samuel, Father Samuel Melosha from our neighboring parish of uh, St. Gabriel the Archangel. And it was my pleasure uh, to be here with you, to pray Holy Mass with you today. And I think we have an announcement from our deacon. On behalf of Father Don and your parish staff, you're invited and encouraged actually to stay tuned at the end of the liturgy uh, for the virtual coffee and donut uh, presentation that always follows our recorded uh, mass. And this week, you will hear about the instructions of our ongoing and annual uh, benefit of our bag, in which we all gather uh, foodstuffs and bring for the sake of the poor in the diocese. And I would like to also thank Father Samuel uh, for being with us in Father Don's absence, that he might get a little bit of needed rest. <laughs> And uh, you're always welcome, our Father. We just love to have you. Thank you, Deacon. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Charles Parish. My name is Doug Langner and I work for Bishop Sullivan Center and I'm just here to talk to you just a little bit about our bag which is what St. Charles will be um, doing this weekend. I believe you'll be distributing bags this weekend's masses and or at the parish on the 14th and 15th of November and then the parish asks you to bring them back on the following weekends of November the 21st and 22nd as well as the 28th and 29th of November. It's also my understanding that the uh, parish is looking for people to help sort um, the food that comes back from our bag on December the 5th. Just to give you a quick story about someone that your donations will go to help feed, I was just outside the other day and I saw a young woman kind of walking around but seemed pretty unsure and I asked if I could help her and um, this young woman proclaimed, you know, she's She's never had to come to a food pantry before. She was recently laid off from her server job and um, just starting to kind of figure out this world. And so the food that you donate from your generosity will go to help women like her and her family. Um, also, sometimes people carry everything up to our, our building with everything they own on their back. And that sounds just a little bit like the Christmas story that we hear about with Mary, Joseph, and Jesus wandering with pretty much most of their possessions on the back and, and bringing, bringing our Lord into, into this world at Christmas. And so in this season of giving, we're thankful that you're participating in our bag. And I know St. Charles has done this for years. And, and uh, just rest assured that your donations will go to help people right here in our community at the Bishop Sullivan Center. And we thank you for participating in St. Charles's Our Bag program. God bless. Take care. <music>